So our, our first speaker will be Philippe Applewaugh, and he will be followed by the amazing Georgie Stout. And then we'll have a little conversation and then go get toasted upstairs. <laughs> so come on up. Yeah, it's all yours. Thank you. Okay. It, it's working, yes, okay. All right, good evening and thank you for the invitation. I'm so happy to be back at the Cooper Hewitt Museum and to present you some of my work and let's try to fix it. Uh, what I wanted to tell you before we start the presentation is that I'd, I collect a series of uh, body of work that I've done, posters, logo ties, motion graphic pieces, and I wanted to show you also the design process I'm going through, you know. I don't want you to show uh, only the final uh, result, but also how everything is uh, made and developed step by step. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sitting because I can see the screen better. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> There's no more. To, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm working a lot with typography and I like uh, design uh, typography in a very expressive way, uh, meaning that, for instance, what you see on the screen, there are um, a series of uh, experimental uh, typefaces that have been designed over the years. Uh, let's start with a, a very recent work. Uh, this is um, a scarf, actually it's not a poster, it's a scarf and it was uh, made for Hermès, the brand, the luxurious brand that was commissioned to design uh, um, this scarf. And the theme was about to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birth of Roland Barthes. Roland Barthes uh, was a French philosopher who explored semiotic and social and design uh, theory. and. Uh, I was asked to design the scarf on the book called The Lover Discourse Fragment. And what I saw, uh, I, s I look at the way the, the book is composed and you see that Roland Barthes will pay attention a lot about the, the layout of his text. Uh, meaning that it doesn't, the, the, his text doesn't start from the first page to the end, but there's also, it's uh, completely fragmented. You have some uh, empty spaces between the paragraphers and what I decided to do is to silhouette it, all of them, you know, making them very graphic. And by that, I did the whole book, meaning that I, I dis, um, put it, uh, the book all together, all the pages next to each other, and it created a complete pattern. The thing also that I wanted to do was to reverse uh, the, um, the black, to the white, so that means that the end. That, that's what it gives on on the on the textile, on the textile. Also, the if I went to this uh, ideas, it's because Roland Barthes uh, worked a lot, uh, works a lot about uh, structuralism, and this uh, revealed the structure of the book itself. It's like the the thumbnails on the railroad of the the of his essay, from the front cover to the back cover. And also when you design a scarf, it's very different than designing a poster because it's two sides. And at the beginning I wanted to do something with typography, but I realized that it would be um, problematic because on the other side, I mean, typography can be readable. So this is a very brand new uh, work and it revealed also the, the way I like to, to, to work with abstract shapes, um, using also the not only the positive shape, but the, the negative shapes, the silence of it, to try to reveal something from the, uh, the grid system, uh, which is something that I learned actually during uh, my uh, studies and the, all the internship that I did in the Netherlands, because I really swallow all the Dutch design in the way I'm working. I show you that image that doesn't have anything to do with uh, graphic, but it was a very emblematic image uh, in the 1989 uh, in China at Beijing during the, the, the you know the the, the the demonstration there, and I used that because I was uh, asked to design a poster for a literature festival in Aix-en-Provence, which is a city in the, in the south of France, and on in 2012 the theme was. Uh, Noises of the world, which means that they invited um, four or five writers who are uh, activists, uh, political activism uh, in their country from China, from the Middle East, from the east of Europe, and each of them tried to fight for 
equal justice, and they, they press where it hurts. So in French, it's called bruit du monde, which means noise of the world. And I try to combine um, typography and hand, um, mat, uh, hand um, drawings just by fingerprints. And I like to work like that, you know, to mix the technique. I think if you want to bring something, an emotional dimension in a poster, it's interesting to not uh, froze yourself with the technology, with the computer, but really to, m to bring something that you can do with hands, with your hands. And uh, the elongation of uh, each letter bring a kind of dialogue with all of them and, and show direction. And at the end, that's the final poster. I wanted to also to find the right color. I pay attention to the color at the end of the, the whole process. For me, color become, comes at the end. I always think in black and white first, and then the color. The light blue is the color of hope. It's the color of the sky. It's also the color of a big ocean. And then you see the letters, they're like island. And the fact that there you have these fingerprints is also to talk about the time passing. This is another sketch uh, for uh, a poster called Vivo in Tipo, and it was a poster I designed for an exhibition of my own work. Uh, the title I, which I found was means li live with typography, to live with typography, to be completely uh, uh, inspired, I mean uh, immersed, you know, in typography. And I tried to design the, the letters by the accumulation of punctuation. If I blow up, if I, you, you see the blow, you, you have the feeling of transparency and on texture, on weaving. And that's something also that I like to do with my work, is trying to find something that it looks like there's a 3D effect, there's a, a something um, in the printed matter that is not flat anymore. I'm doing a lot, as I explained it to you, with experimental typography. This is done for a uh, um, theater in the south of France, in Toulouse. And I just play with this very abstract shape. And you see, I used the, the primary colors. And why I did that? Because on stage, when you mix them, you know, you create white... Uh, uh, white light, you know, the light of uh, purely white is created by the mix of primary color. So to, to overlap some letters, you have some white uh, in surface, and it tells about uh, the theater uh, atmosphere. Each year, it's a result of experimentation. For instance, that was the year after, so those posters are made to announce the season each time. And this is a, um, a kind of pointillism uh, made with typography. And just the dots are next to each other. Some part of them are black out. And by turning them, it creates the letter. You can read it from distance. That's another thing also I like to do, is to play with the way you see the, the, the work from a distance or from very close nearby. This is the most recent one. and. This is perhaps more uh, a classic, I will tell, by the, the, the fact that I didn't design the typeface myself, but I wanted to, to mix them all together to try to, to fill the space of the poster as much as I can without losing the readability. And also I tried to limit myself with the number of colors and make something that is uh, an, an alternation, it, it alternates each color, you know, are next to each other and they complete to, and they just play and they became at the end a kind of detail of a big weaving again, you know. <laughs> I like movement, uh, to play movement with typography. Um, before I'm talking about this image, I wanted to tell you that with the new technology, what is fabulous is that you can really bring movement in, in, in letters. Uh, by essence, letters are not made to, to be moved, but 
uh, I think it's it's a great uh, opportunity that we have in our time, you know, to to bring motion to me uh, with typography. I will show you some other uh, sample. Let me talk about another uh, poster which is on view uh, upstairs on the second floor. Uh, it was designed for uh, a theater in Paris called the Châtelet, and uh, it was at the, the occasion to present it the 1946 uh, American opera uh, called Street Scene by Kurt Weill. Uh, the story depicts the life in the Lower East Side, and when I'm starting to design a poster, I'm always looking for you know some documentation. So I try to find some images of what is the Lower East Side. And I knew that the, 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 the on stage there will be something that we produce that uh, you know ur urban landscape, and I tried you know to focus on the on the steps that you have on in front of each uh, building of the tenements, and immediately I, s I thought to myself, well perhaps I can you know play with the letters and try to do something you know to to do something with the step, but I didn't know what exactly. And when you do things like this on a computer, even if it looks quite interesting, it's very dry and very mechanical. It doesn't really tell so much about uh, the story itself. And I wanted to have something a little bit more dramatic. So what I did, I started to, to think about uh, using the two words and, and fold it several times to recreate the steps in 3D. And when I did that on a computer, was interesting, but not strong enough because I thought, uh, once again, uh, you have the limit of the technology and even if you can find, if you can do everything you want, you lose perhaps what I call the em emotional dimension that I'm looking for in every work that I'm trying to do. So that's the reason why I went to the old technique and doing it by hand. These are laser print which have been, uh, you know, pasted on, um, on a foam core and fold it, and then by doing s several photos, different shoot, and put it on a computer, and then you go back and forth, you know, uh, by the very traditional technique to the uh, with the new tools on Photoshop. So I I was able, you know, to retouch the the photo and to include it in the old composition. And then it's not only the the step that you can see of the tenement, but also the way the, the typography is placed reveal all the detail of this architecture, meaning of the facade, meaning the bricks, the pediments, the, the doors, the windows, the lintels, and it plays also with the space of the poster. I'm really paying attention about proportion of the space. And that's what you will f uh, see on the sketches of uh, a poster I designed for the, the Institutional Navigable Waterways of France who had organized an exhibition of model of antique barges. Instead to reproduce the barges, I saw that I can uh, reveal them just with the typography by the elongation by of the, uh, the typography itself. That's the final poster. You see that uh, the type uh, elongated segment create the images of the barges with their reflection in the water. And I'm paying also a lot of attention to control the proportion, the, the empty space. Everything has a, 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 um, a clearly space for it. It's not placed just by random. It's very in, in control at the end. This is the corporate identity I did for that uh, institution. And of course, what I wanted to try to do was to uh, to reveal the, the light uh, reflection upon the water and the movement of the water. And when I was talking to you about the grid system, you can see here there's only two colors. I mean, it's light blue, uh, black, and the white. The white become active. But let's go back to the idea of the grid system. You see that the light blue has only three columns. The black is four columns, and the white is five columns. So there's a reason that is created step by step. And by overlapping them, once again, you create a kind of 3D effect. It's like there's a depth in, in the poster. This is something uh, different. It's a poster that I've designed uh, almost 10 years ago, but uh, I, I still very much like it because, once again, it was about experimental typography to do type only by using slashes. It was a poster about uh, for an exhibition about the, the art and the creation and the, the history of a region in France called La Lorraine, which is located on the northeast of the country. And it's well known for the textile production. And I was very much inspired by, uh, by, it, by the fact that with just 
a simple slash, I can repeat it I, and make an accumulation and work with the spacing of it, the space and create, once again, the feeling of movement. I use it again uh, for a poster of, mm, my, uh, of an exhibition I had in Ukraine a few years ago, and because it was a, a great source of, uh, of work. For instance, you see those motion graphic pieces. I don't know if they work, they don't. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't matter. Normally it should move. But anyway, so you can see that the whole alphabet have been uh, created, was created. It's coming. Okay. Just take times. Just for you to know, um, I found a lot of my inspiration by looking at the painting, as you probably saw before, for instance, but also in performing art. And that's something I wanted to tell you while you watch this. I learned a lot by watching uh, uh, dance performances, uh, contemporary dance, especially uh, you know from America. I mean, I had the chance to to see uh, the perf very young the performances by uh, um, Albin Nicolais and, and Cunningham and Martha Graham. All these people really inspire me so much and still are. Uh, this is uh, something completely different and you can't really see on the screen, but there is a series of book cover. Uh, it's a, f a review called Afrique Contemporaine, Contemporary Africa. And the logotype has been, w was the occasion to design uh, a specific typeface, uh, completely uh, abstract, again, completely experimental. And I use it, you know, also for the, the, the pages that announce every uh, chapter. And once again, it was the idea of uh, you, uh, bringing the movement by um, uh, taking away part of the letters. I mean, they're just fading away. And you see there's a progression uh, of it. And, and that's the one of the posters which was designed for, for that uh, review. And for that, I mean, while, when I was talking to you about inspiration, that I look a lot about uh, all these artifacts which are made in Africa, and that's really the way I, I went to find uh, the ID. I'm talking again to the same uh, literature festival in Aix-en-Provence, and this is really the last poster of design, and because it's going to happen in the next month. Uh, and it's an homage to uh, Swedish writers called Henrik Mankel, who is very well known from the, uh, his crime novels. And the title of it is uh, From the Snow to the Sand. These are sketches. And why that? Because uh, he's living part-time in Sweden and in Mozambique. And he said, I have a foot in the snow and I have a foot in the sand. So just with typography, this is the poster. You, and it's very hard to see on the screen. But it's a low res and it used a bitmap uh, texture. And uh, what I try, again, to express, instead to show uh, a landscape, you know, uh, of, s of a desert, of a, s um, a snow, of something, I, I think that only with typography and with very small amount of color you can express the, the, the feeling. Typography has a lot of uh, meaning. Type if you cut part of the letters, if you play with, with them in the space, so you, you give life to them, you, you, you increase the meaning the, uh, of them, the sense and the concept also, of course. And once again, here you see how much I care about uh, the proportion and how 
things are placed in, in the, the surface of the page. This is uh, the last logo I designed, the, the very most recent logo type, A, F. A, it's uh, for the word ameublement, which means furnishing, and F for French. French. And this is a union that promotes uh, the all the, what has what all what is related to French furnishing, not only the distributor but also the manufacturers, and I've tried to design two very abstract letters. This is the the logo with the the the, the title of it, which is uh, the made in Avenir. But I made some very few changes. For instance, you know the C of Francais, which is completely redesigned. But I tried to make it really playful. The idea was to, to to abstract the letters and to make them look like if they are furniture view from above that you can move in a space, and it's a play uh, of very simple shapes. And you can see on this motion graphic pieces how the logo can even ex be expanded. It's like if you push a furniture next to the wall in a room and in another, another room, and then you play with the positive and the negative, and it's become very uh, playful, attractive, and very eye-catching also. And that's what we're looking for when we design corporate identity. This is uh, uh, something very different, very abstract, and I was extremely surprised when I got the commission by Hermès again to design the number for swatch. Uh, uh, and for watch, not for swatch, for watch. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that recently they did something with uh, the Apple Watch. I don't know if you heard about it, but I mean, there's a big thing. Anyway, so uh, Hermès commissioned me to design the numbers, and I tried to, to make them very abstract again, and why that, and very fast because uh, they told me that the watch is going to, to be very, very fine, very, very flat. So I try only with one line to design all the numbers. And you have to keep in mind that uh, the, the, the watch is a very, very small uh, object. So it has to be read in very, very tiny uh, surface. You see it in really big on the screen, but in fact, it's a very small one. It's the most recent watch uh, by Hermès. And it's called Slim, Slim by Hermes, Slim because everything is so refined. It brings me to some uh, poster I designed uh, for, for exhibition I had recently at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, which is almost like the, uh, the, the, the brother and the sister of this museum here. And uh, the, the exhibition called Tiporama, and uh, this is uh, um, the poster. You, it reveals how the, the letters were made by segment, and it's a poster, I uh, typefaces that I designed myself. And at the occasion, the, 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 um, the museum published in association with uh, Thames and Hudson a very big book, uh, which is uh, still available, I think, in the English version. version. And just uh, uh, the year after, there, uh, there was another exhibition in Aix-en-Provence. We call it Typo Appelois. And I, and I didn't find the, the, the title of it. The, the, they wanted me to use my name, which is not that easy. Uh, it, it, of course, every, every creative people have an ego, and I do have like uh, everyone. <laughs> but uh, I must tell you that it's not easy to use my own name in such a big uh, uh, scale. But I start to think about it, and typo, it's the, the, the abbreviation of, I mean, it means type, it's typo for typography, and I always try to use what the random give me, you know, by counting the letters and trying to find the right combination that reveals something like if it was made for it, and it just happened that, you know, I, I found a, a way to cross the two words and to reveal this, the, the, the soul of what I'm looking for, what I'm doing every day. And that's uh, an image of the exhibition we, we designed. The poster were uh, floating in the air in the middle of a huge room. And you see them on both sides. And here you see some posters that I've, I've shown you. For instance, the, the Vivo in Tipo poster on Crossing the Line was uh, made for a, a festival here in New York, uh, which is uh, organized and, uh, by the French Institute. And now I'm preparing the next exhibition. I'm very lucky, I'm unspoiled, and it's going to happen in the Stelic Museum. It starts next year, and it's called Using Type. And this is the poster of it. And that's, voila.
I, I try to, to go as fast as I can, but then you can see the motion graphic uh, pieces that we do for the exhibition. If you have questions later, I can answer you. Thank you.